Alright guys, so we're jumping into the middle of a scene here from Medal of Honor Warfighter. My name is Kevin O'Leary, Global Brand Manager on this game here. We're going to walk you through uh, one of our levels in the game called Shore Leave. game here is powered by Frostbite 2. You can see a beautiful in-game sequence right here lining us up as the soldiers get ready to drop in uh, to the hot spot in Somalia off the coast. That's all she gets. Good to go. So Stump here is one of our brand new characters from Metal of Honor Warfighter. Quite a few characters, and the main story follows Preacher, a uh, returning character from 2010's Medal of Honor offering. Uh, but here you get to check out Stump, new guy, and he is fighting in the Tier 1 unit Task Force Mako. And here you are seeing, uh, this is the assault on the Somalia coast, we're talking about levels called Shore Leave. Um, we'll give it a couple of seconds here to check it out and get acquainted with the level. So we're coming in quiet. We know that they're waiting for us on the edge. Uh, I had to turn back the helicopters, RPG, so we're going to go down and try and take some of the skinnies out. Boom. They have snipers, obviously, so this isn't going to be the easiest of assaults. You can see, again, Frostbite um, offering a full body experience for players out there. Very visceral and real world experience. This so looks like we've seen where uh, they're attacking us from. We're going to try and get into that post. Try and take out the snipers that are shooting us from the left side. We have a falling voodoo. You can see the micro destruction overhead. Uh, this is a key component of Frostbite, but also the Medal of Honor Warfighter uh, taking the great Battlefield 3 engine and really focusing on going for micro destruction rather than the kind of the mega destruction with vehicles and the all out warfare um, that Battlefield offers. We really want to keep a visceral, up close experience for the player. You're going to see a lot of wood chips. You can see the chips on the cement, a lot of debris in the air from a gunfire, grenades, things like that. You can see the palm trees swing in the wind. We have some weather effects in there as well. There you go, you can see the debris, nice. Animation system has also been reworked. You can see uh, the enemy AI getting blown up by that grenade, unfortunately for him there. You can also see the friendly system is in rework too. Your characters are going to be able to move like you do through objects, around objects, and also um, react to enemy weapons, grenades, things like that. Make smart plays as you need them to throughout the game. There you go. Using destruction to your advantage. You can see that red uh, headshot indicator come up there. That is uh, letting players know that you, on your first contact with that, enemy, you headshot him. If you get a white indicator, that'll mean that you hit him or identified him before um, and then headshot him. So we're coming up to our first door breach here. Uh, it's a brand new mechanic in the game. It's very cool and very fun offering. So you're going to see a selection menu come up. And it starts with the kick, and the second option there is the tomahawk, and crowbar is our third option. And next to it, you see the headshot indicator, um, three out of four. So go ahead and select that, um, any of them. What you're going to do here is Breach the door as you've chosen. And as you enter into the room, tier one style, for every headshot you get, you're gonna come closer to unlocking a new way of breaching into the different rooms and elements here. Got some skilled shooting right here. Oh, you see the timing bar at the bottom there. Um, every shot you miss takes the timing bar down. Every headshot you get brings that bar back up. You know, it helps you take that surprise of entering the room quickly. Um, and mow down the enemies. So now it looks like we've been asked to uh, target a building, LTLM, laser targeting light module. So as we saw in the beginning of the level, we have ships offshore. So we're going to call in some heavy artillery to take out that building that was full of the snipers from the very beginning that led us down to the water. Voodoo, you can see, returns as well from 2010, if players remember. Uh, he was one of the tier one leaders there, and he is currently in charge of this point in section, um, leading this expedition for Task Force Mako. See on the left those other icons, that's Task Force, or not Task Force, Grizzly, um, another group, these are Marines who are uh, coordinated up with you guys here in Somalia. So obviously this building is not structurally sound after hitting it with such heavy artillery. Um, so we're gonna drop down to this area here and we're gonna jump into uh, one of the robot components that you have in the game. 
And you can see we're, we're trying to coordinate and follow up with the other Marines. We've been split up. So uh, we're good to go. We're going to explore this building and try and meet up with them because they're under some heavy fire. This robot's very powerful. Comes with a mounted cannon and a machine gun. You can switch between the two weapon systems. Nicely done. You can see the beautiful lighting effects overhead and the way that the light bounces across the room here. Again, all powered by the Frostbite 2 engine. Uh, making the game really shine, giving the players a really in-depth experience, but also a very cool look at what's coming ahead. The robot's been disabled. We're kind of stuck here. All right, so it's time to go finish the fight. Resupplying. Uh, anytime you can go up to your teammates here in the game and hold X to resupply, they'll give you more ammunition. Right, we're going to breach another door. If you're noticing, uh, we're going to breach the door. We get to choose again what's going on, but we're actually in a different spot. Um, so we've limited the, the views that we can do here. We'll try a different version, but we're now in a different location of where we are in this breach. So we're fourth in. Enemies are stunned with the flash. Again, we're going to get those headshots to kind of unlock the next elements in the full game. But also one of the cool things is as you unlock more and more of these breaches, uh, they actually change the way the enemies react. A door kick is not as explosive as some of the other ones. Um, there's be many more explosive ones like door handle blows or breaches where you can knock enemies back even from the doorway if they're standing nearby. And like any good Frostbite game, you can use destruction to your advantage, but it also can be used against you. Sometimes hiding behind a wall won't last for so long because the other team, the other enemies will be shooting RPGs, heavy fire at you as well. You can see the enemy AI system there, reworked, jumping down from the different levels, moving between them. These guys aren't nearly as highly trained as you, but they are smart trying to keep themselves alive for a limited period of time. All right, so we're still making our way towards those Marines. First section's cleared out. We're going to drop down and cross over to the other set of buildings. Looks like they're rolling in on a truck here. Looks like the center's pretty well locked up. We might want to go around the other side here. Taking some fire, but moving quickly. You can combat toggle while in the game, too. So as you're zoomed down scope, if you uh, hit right stick, it'll move between your different optics that you have on the weapon. Here you see we have a regular power optic kind of just a, a red dot laser sight, and then moving on to it is a 3x power, so you can use that same dot sight with accuracy at range. We spend a lot of time making sure that the weapons, both the sounds and look and feel are very authentic. Um, this comes from a variety of things, working with tier one units that have fired and worked on and customized all of these weapons, uh, but also making sure that we work with some of the weapon partners, get really authentic sounds, sights on them. You can see how the rails on them are fully customizable. Especially in multiplayer as you go through, you're really able to customize your weapons um, as far as you want. All right, so we regroup now with those Marines that we just saw uh, when we were in the robot. Now we're gonna try and take this center area with both of the task forces together. Another feature we have in the game, uh, it's unique to Medal of Honor, is the peek and lean feature. So uh, you come around a corner, and instead of exposing your entire body, you can lean around the corner, go down sights, take out enemies, move to the next cover location, etc. Accurate burst of fire, you have the same thing. You can toggle uh, tones of fire as well. You want to do single shot 
Um, bur burst shot, automatic, depending on the actual weapon offering, you can change up the way you play the game. All right, so now we're fully regrouped here. We move through this area, much bigger force than we were before. Up the stairs, so we're still trying to uh, help take down those RPG guys that were shooting away our helicopters from earlier. We want that Apache support, little bird support. And again, you can see stacks on a different location here. So each time the breaching mechanic is different, not only in what you end up choosing, but also where you are within the process of doing the breaching. And yes, sometimes you get to do the breach. So some prize elements in the game, you're not always gonna have the same room to enter. Sometimes rooms will be empty. Sometimes things won't go as planned. You can obviously tell that your teammates there are helping as well. And Tier 1 always comes prepared. They're able to turn any situation into an advantage for them. So we're going to use these tables on the side here, making a mobile sniping station. Stump, like any Tier 1 operator, is trained in every form of weaponry. He's a very good sniper. We get to see this in another level as well. We use his sniping expertise. And there we have uh, Voodoo as the spotter. And again, big maps, really focused on small infantry combat at certain points of time, but the sniping, big moments are still in it. All powered by the beautiful Frostbite 2 engine, the same guy yeah, that's powering Battlefield 3. So that's a quick look at level shore leave. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you soon on Metal of Honor Warfighter. Let's back up.